In this recording, we shall look at simplifying thirds, where we will focus on thirds involving a whole number under a square root sign. And an entire third has the entire number under the root sign. So for an example of that, the square root of 5, for instance, would be an entire third. Whereas a mixed third also has a number outside the root sign. So for example, 2 root 5, which means 2 multiplied by the square root of 5. And a third is said to be in its simplest form if the number under the root sign is not divisible by any perfect squares. So 2 root 5, for instance, would be in the simplest form as, the, as 5 is not divisible by any perfect squares. And by perfect squares, we mean, for instance, 1, 4, since that's 2 times 2 is 2 squared, 9, etc. To simplify a third involving a square root sign, we first find the largest perfect square that is a factor of the number under the root sign. And if the largest such number is 1, then the third is already in simplest form. Whereas if that number is greater than 1, we then start by rewriting the third as a product of its two factors that include the perfect square. So let's look at an example to see how these first two steps work before we proceed on to step 3. For example, writing the square root of 20 in simplest form. So are any perfect squares 1, 4, 9, 16, etc. Are any of these factors of 20 other than just 1? And the answer is yes. 20 equals 4 times 5. So 4 is a perfect square that is a factor of 20. So therefore, we now apply step 2, which is rewriting the third as a product of its two factors. In this case, 4 times 5, that will be to get 20, so that that product includes the perfect square. Now what? Well, the final step is that we split the product under the square root sign into a product of two separate thirds. We can then split it up into, for instance, square root of 4 in this case, times square root of 5. And from here, the final step is we can evaluate the root that is in fact the square root of a perfect square. What does that mean? Well, we said that 4 was a perfect square, so let's evaluate the square root of 4. That is just 2. So therefore, the square root of 20 is 2 times the square root of 5. And in such a case, as we saw before, people often exclude that multiplication sign there, so that this would just be written 2 root 5, for instance, and that would in fact be the simplest form of the square root of 20. Let's do a second example, writing the square root of 108 in its simplest form. So once again we need to start off by asking the question, are there any perfect squares other than 1 that are factors of 108? Well, let's start off by writing this out, since it's a bigger number where this might not be immediately obvious, Let's start by writing this as a product of primes. And 108 is divisible by 2 since it is even, so breaking it down gradually, it is 54 times 2. In turn, 54 is also even and can be rewritten as 27 times 2, meaning 108 is 27 times 2 times 2. 27 can then be broken down into... 9 times 3, and that's all still multiplied by 2 times 2. And finally, that 9 can be broken down further into 3 times 3. So that 108, as a product of prime numbers, 
is in fact 3 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. Now if there are perfect squares that are factors of 108, remember that to get a perfect square it is a number multiplied by the same number. So here you'll notice in this prime factorisation we have 2 times 2. So therefore we know that 4 is in fact a factor of 108 and that is a perfect square. But is it the largest perfect square that is a factor of 108? Well no it isn't because we can also see here that we have 3 times 3 which is 9. That is also a factor of 108. So does that mean that 9 is the largest perfect square that's a factor of 108? Well actually no, that's not true either because if we multiply one perfect square by another perfect square we will also get a perfect square. So 4 times 9 is equal to 36 is also a factor. And that makes sense because we're saying that 3 times 3 and 2 times 2 are both factors. That means that 3 times 2, which is 6, multiplied by 3 times 2, which is 6, that's also giving us a perfect square of 36. So in this case, 36 is in fact the largest perfect square that is a factor of 108. So that's what we'll need to use in order to write square root of 108 in its simplest form. And once we've determined that that is the case, the rest of the process is now simple. Square root of 108, it is in fact square root of 36 times 3. So now we can split that up again into two separate thirds. So that will become square root of 36 multiplied by square root of 3 and the square root of 36 we saw was just 6. So therefore 108 will just become 6 times the square root of 3 or 6 root 3. So those are a couple of examples of simplifying thirds.